I am going to introduce my colleague, uh, Dr. Tarek Al Said. Dr. Al Said is an associate professor of pediatrics here at UPMC at Children's Hospital of Pittsburgh. He's one of my close colleagues in imaging, and he will be moderating the next session on cone repair in special situations. Thank you so much, Dr. Olivieri. Thank you, everyone. Uh, these were like really fantastic sessions. The next session is also a very exciting session. Uh, we're going to talk to uh, Dr. Jose da Silva himself uh, about some um, cone repairs in special situations and difficult cone repairs. Uh, Dr. da Silva needs no introduction. He is a professor of surgery at University of Pittsburgh and the director of our international da Silva Center of Epstein's Anomaly. Along his multiple achievements, uh, he and Dr. Luciana de Silva started the cone operation for the tricuspid valve in Epstein's anomaly 31 years ago. Dr. de Silva is a great mentor and a friend. Welcome, Dr. de Silva. Thank you, Dr. Tarek, for the kind um, introduction. Uh, I always uh, thank you to uh, Victor Morrell and the OPMC for creating uh, um, the Da Silva Center for Abyssin Anomaly. I want to thank uh, also the organizer of this meeting, especially Katie Scollin, uh, Drew Berkerhold, and Erin uh, Colvin. I'm also grateful to Dr. Norman Silverman, Dr. Christopher Not Craig, and uh, Dr. Simone uh, Pedra, who came from far away to enrich the symposium. Finally, I want to thank to everybody who are lecturing or attending to this uh, symposium. <clears throat> I am uh, gonna, I am going to address uh, the special uh, situation in anomaly and how to repair it. Uh, I call that those special situations we have a hypoplast tricus valve leaflet, we have tricus valve extreme rotation into the right uh, ventricle outflow tract, and cone repair of tricus valve replacement, and also cone repair of the starting procedure that I'm going to skip because it has been discussed already. Here uh, we have in the left the Epstein anomaly with displacement of septal and anterior leaflet, dividing the vent between two cavities, um, atrialized and uh, functional RV. And in the right, we have the con procedure where we mm, and mobilize all the abnormal leaflet attachments, uh, leaving only the apical, uh, the area, a small area near the apex of the heart without uh, cutting the, the tissues, the survival attachment, and then make a cone and place it in the right AV uh, junction. <clears throat> Here, we have a real case. The septal leaflet is very uh, is small. We mobilize the anterior leaflet, connect to the inferior leaflet. Then we make an anterior septal uh, uh, incision and mobilize the septal leaflet together, in this case, with the anterior leaflet. Then uh, we rotate the inferior leaflet to augment the septal leaflet and make a cone. Then we placate the annulus uh, accordingly, and we have in the right a good cone uh, repair. Here's another uh, case where you, we combine again the, septal, uh, the inferior leaflet with the septal leaflet and got an excellent repair. Then, uh, this is a patient, the uh, first adult patient, I mean, one of the adult patients from this institution, where you see that the anterior leaflet uh, had like a normal attachment to the RV. The inferior leaflet was, was tethered, 
but those are okay. And, and then we could mobilize them and, and do a con which became completely competent and uh, with good uh, distal attachment and good structure for the right ventricle. So the echo shows that the RV uh, is good with good subvalvular uh, apparatus with good trabeculation of the wall and good function. So even though this lady was older, she had symptoms because the, there was a, a very severe regurgitation, but she has a good structure RV and to have a good long-term result. Now uh, we have this patient, uh, which echocardiogram shows a little leaflet, almost no leaflet when you see in four chamber views. Probably the leaf, the, certain the leaflet were uh, positioned in the outflow tract of the right ventricle. And this will uh, certainly require uh, enlargement. Uh, see here the severe regurgitation, and this probably require uh, enlargement of the leaflet. And so this is the operation, and here uh, after we did all the delamination of the valve, start constructing the cone, we note that we're missing some tissue here near the septal area. So we got a uh, fresh autologue pericardial patch and use it to augment the septal leaflet, avoiding uh, uh, cone, um, avoid trichus valve stenosis and distortion of the cone at the end. And here we have the echocardiogram. Look, there's some prolapse of the leaflet, but the, the coaptation area is distal, so that does not affect the competency of the valve after the repair. And the patch uh, allowed us to position the valve a little supravalvar in the septal area to avoid uh, uh, heart block. Here uh, is another patient with insufficient tissue uh, for a distortion free con repair. So the anterior leaflet, the inferior leaflet, Here's the septal leaflet. You, there's a gap between the septal and inferior leaflet, causing severe tricuspid regurgitation. Here we start by mobilizing the septal leaflet. See that we dissect the papillary muscle in order to elongate in them and to allow the better um, coaptation distally. Now we are taking down the anterior leaflet together with the inferior leaflet in order that to look behind the leaflet and cut the abnormal uh, attachment of this leaf, those leaflets to the RV. Now we put together uh, the septal with the anterior leaflet. Then uh, the, the inferior leaflet with the septal leaflet. Then we close uh, a little bit the anterior inferior commissure, placate the anus and start um, reposition the valve in the normal anus. And we know that was missing tissues. We, we need to get more tissues. And then uh, we use this pericardial patch to enlarge it. So since the, there's a chance of uh, um, shrinking, we, we use it to a, a big one. So it doesn't have to grow also. And this allowed us to, to put it above the sinus, above the normal um, junction, avoiding uh, heart block. But it's above the 
coronary signs. I mean, this of the coronary signs. So now, uh, my colleague is testing it, see the, the valve closed perfectly with saline test. And we look back, it's still there, so it's not leaking at all. The echocardiogram, uh, six months after repair, shows the septal patch in supravalvar position and no tricuspid valve uh, regurgitation or stenosis. Then uh, we have this uh, description of the many position of the tricuspid valve, the many degrees of rotation of the tricuspid valve inside the right ventricle. And in our experience, the experience in all those cases was possible uh, to do the coronal repair. And as you see in the right. And in some cases, the valve is extremely rotate to the inside the RV toward the RVOT. In this first case, that uh, Epstein described, he demonstrated that the patient had like um, a bad anatomy with extreme rotation and dilation of the outflow tract of the right ventricle. And the patient died when he was 19 years old. Here uh, uh, is, is a patient from our museum, the, uh, the pathology, heart museum specimen of a 14 years old patient, meaning that the patient died at 14. And here's the pulmonary valve, and here is the anterior leaflet, uh, very near the pulmonary valve, and, and also linear attachment. So the only opening was this one, and the RV outflow tract is dilated, meaning that there was a lot of regurgitation in the tricus valve. This is just a drawing to, to imitate nature. So, in this paper of the Mayo Clinic, they expressed their concern about the valve that have severe leaflet uh, displacement into the RV apex or those anterior rotated into the RVOT that are generally not suitable for the traditional monocusp uh, repair, which is a little different in the cone. Like this was my first case uh, where the anatomy uh, was like that, the anterior and inferior leaf that are tethered to the RV uh, wall, anterior and inferior. And there's a, uh, by pulling uh, the valve, you can see there's a little hole. That's the only uh, opening uh, toward the, the, the functional right ventricle. And this was very close to the pulmonary valve. So we took down those, mobilized that leaflet, so we end up uh, with a big membrane that we can transform like in a funnel, and then we open uh, the distal part of this, uh, make a cone. And here, um, uh, this is not running, but this, uh, at the result, we have a perfect uh, echocardiogram after the repair and a good function of the right ventricle. Uh, this is another uh, type of anatomy in, in the extreme rotation of the tricuspid valve in Abstin anomaly, where uh, we see a distal continuity of the septal with the anterior leaflet. So, uh, so at the end, we have a hole, uh, but a bigger hole toward the outflow tract uh, that imitates a true valve, it's a true valve actually, uh, with leaflet and subvalvular apparatus. So in this case, we can cut those uh, uh, attachments near the pulmonary valve, like you see here, and then uh, we close that hole going toward 
uh, the outflow tract. And next, we make we, we take down the inferior leaflet as well, and then we plan to make the apex of the new valve near the apex of the, the right vent. Uh, and then we put some suture in this area and made a fenestration. So we got like a membranous uh, valve that function uh, very well. This is an echocardiogram and another patient extreme rotation of the tricast valve into the RVOT. The four chamber view um, uh, shows a small displaced septal leaflet, displaced uh, inferior leaflet. Uh, and here in the next, you see that the severe rotation, oh, it's going too fast, let's go back. Can you make this run, please? Oh. Uh, should, maybe I can go here, I can go here, sorry. I think the, I think it's not obeying me very well, that's why I'm a little here. Okay, so here you can see that the, the pulmonary valve Let's see if I... So you can see the pulmonary valve and the leaflet opening, I mean the opening, the valve opening toward the leaf there, and then you can see severe rotation uh, of the tricuspid valve is severe regurgitation in multiple uh, areas. Now, uh, uh, we have another situation where you don't have continuity of the distal uh, part of the valve between the septal and anterior leaflet. You have some continuity of the septal with the inferior leaflet. So in this case, uh, we took down uh, the valve the, 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 and connected to the, uh, to the septal leaflet. So we detach the abnormal connection near the pulmonary valve rotate it and connect it to the trica, uh, to the septal um, leaflet. So we continue that suture and then uh, we, we position the valve and here we have the result without any patch. Um, here we have the echo of that case with minimal trica valve regurgitation and you see in the left that the valve is moving uh, very nicely. So the, here we compare the pre-op with the post-op echo, showing uh, that severe regurgitation is transformed in minimal regurgitation. Here's another case that uh, you see in the left that the valve is connected to, is very rotated toward the pulmonary valve. And then in the middle, you see an angiogram showing that there's very small um, functional right ventricle and the tricuspid valve is open in this direction. And this was done through the, after the Glenn procedure. Then we did the repair. This is a case that we did in Israel a few years ago and the patient is doing very well with one and a half uh, physiology. Now I want to call attention for the common repair of the tricuspid valve replacement in Epstein anomaly. We had uh, three cases done, uh, in, one in Brazil, the first one, and, the, and two of them at the Children's House of Pittsburgh. Here's the patient done in Brazil. You see in the MRI that the prosthesis and some tissue under the, underneath the prosthesis. So that prosthesis was calcified, stenotic, and regurgitant. And then on the right, we have the result, which shows a little uh, moderate regurgitation, and over time became a minimal regurgitation in these patients. Then we have this patient that we did here in Pittsburgh, where we had uh, 
two valve replacement, tricuspid valve replacement, with um, uh, mechanical prosthesis. So here you see in the echo, that was a, a gradient of 50 millimeters in the tricuspid valve uh, prosthesis, and one of the leaflets was not mobile. And then we reoperated, we remove that valve, <coughs> prosthesis that has a lot of thrombos, as you see here. Then we mobilize the viable tricuspid valve leaflet and construct uh, a mobilized anterior leaflet. <coughs> then the inferior leaflet and septal leaflet and construct the valve, which become very competent. Here's the echocardiogram, postoperative, showing a competent uh, tricuspid valve. This is the other case that Luciana did. It was a bioprosthesis in a five years old boy. He had previously a tricuspid valve repair, yet disclosure, and glenanastomosis. Had a tricuspid valve bioprosthesis at four years of age, and then the colon repaired five years of age. The uh, uh, result was excellent. I want, because of the time concern, I want to skip it. And then uh, the docivacon operation of the Stern procedure for Epstein anomaly that we did here in 2019. So I summarized that uh, in special situation, a good mobility of tricuspid valve anterior leaflet seems to favor good postoperative RV function in morphology. Hypopass tricuspid valve leaflet may require septal leaflet augmentation. Severe rotation of the tricuspid valve into the RVOT is associated with linear attachment of the tricuspid valve anterior leaflet and requires special surgical maneuvers. However, it is repairable with the cone technique. Cone repair of tricuspid valve prosthesis implant may be viable, encouraging, encouraging the preservation of most leaflet tissues uh, during the tricuspid valve replace in, in the Epstein anomaly. I want to finish. Thank you, uh, Luciana, who has been working with me for a long time and making suggestions and creating with me regarding the common operation, many other operation. And I want to thank my son, Pedro, in the name of my daughters, uh, Luciana, uh, Leticia, and Laura, uh, who cope with me during my um, intense. Uh, career uh, requirement that kept me far from them for a long time. Thanks. Thank you very much.